Uh, is there any project you're working on right now that's um, helping people uh, pretty much go, you know, try to overcome this uh, tough times that we're going in? Yeah, you know, uh, in the past I've worked with UNICEF, I've worked with the World Food Program, and I've learned a great deal. And a while back we had a, uh, a crisis in, uh, in a wind, uh, South Sudan, where there was a fire in the village, and a lot of uh, these charities couldn't get there. And I found a group of uh, people down in, uh, in South Sudan, some are family, but some are people that you know, are very working hard. And what we did was uh, we were able to provide food and help people through the tough time. But you know, now fast forwarding with COVID, uh, it really helped us to have people on the ground that we are relying on. Uh, so we wanted to come in and really focus on providing food. Uh, so what we're doing with our foundation is how can we feed families for weeks and weeks knowing that this might go on. So as a member of the diaspora, how important is it for you to be able to go back to South Sudan and help in your community? No, it's, it's very important. I think, you know, not just being South Sudanese, but being African in general, I think uh, it's very important for us that we set example. Um, you know, there's, there's many ways of becoming successful and making money. Uh, but what makes you unique is how can you touch people differently besides the one thing that you did. For me, I really want to challenge myself in opening doors and so many other things. I could put people in a position that could really, you know, uh, help these uh, youth and uh, the diaspora, especially uh, the young kids back home who are not getting opportunities. How can we set up a platform that gives them a path uh, to become, you know, whatever they want to be? What advice do you have for others in the diaspora? First, you have to study uh, what are the issues or what are the challenges, and you'll find many. But then you have to, you know, cut it down to what do I want to help with? You know, I'm always trying to teach people that there's places in Africa uh, that you could actually, you know, with $100, you could pay for a whole tuition for a whole year uh, for a student. $200 and you could get them books and uniforms. It's, it's really important that we take on the responsibility of just understanding that helping one person is, is important as me being capable of helping 20 or 30,000 kids. What are some of the heartwarming messages you're getting from some of the youth that you're working with um, you know, in South Sudan that um, helps you and pushes you to continue to do what you're doing and helping them? You know, we've been doing it for years now and it's always just about uh, exciting every time we see, you know, the opportunities that these kids are getting. We can make kids happy, make families come and thank us for, you know, their kids being able to have the dream and, and to actually go out and try to, you know, make it happen. Um, you know, at the end of the day, for us, whatever you're going to be, we're proud of you. Uh, it's not necessarily you have to be one thing that you're able to. It's just getting an opportunity to, to be great. What's next for Luang Deng? No, there's a lot. I'm working with uh, uh, the NBA and the New Brown Basketball Africa League. Uh, that's something that uh, is really important to me in terms of providing a platform not only to have the league in Africa, but also to uh, challenge these teams to have youth programs uh, for boys and girls. Um, we're working on you know, real estate uh, construction company in Uganda right now where we're trying to build affordable homes. Also including, you know, everything that we are learning outside of South Sudan. How can we bring those experiences back and help our younger generation? We'll never get the opportunity to get the education uh, that we've got. So, you know, it's, it's a lot of things, but uh, it's really what keeps us going and then the foundation work.